Houston's original neighborhood downtown is for everyone. It's our open-hearted home for our biggest celebrations and our treasured hidden gems. Come explore downtown with some amazing free events through Downtown Houston Plus, like the Market Square Park Farmer's Market that happens every Saturday from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. in the city's original open-air marketplace on 301 Milam Street. Learn more at downtownhouston.org. Downtown Houston, get energized and revived. Today on CityCast Houston. The worst child abuse a Harris County judge has ever seen in more than two decades in a courtroom. That's what this little eight-year-old boy suffered. Breaking news. A Houston Regional Amber Alert has been issued for a missing one-year-old boy. Bruised and malnourished, a set of twins managed to escape horrific abuse in Harris County. This is in the Houston area. Uh, we do want to warn you the details of this case are incredibly difficult to see and hear. Often when we hear stories about child abuse, it's too late. But these aren't just news headlines, it's real life. Over 58,000 children were abused in Texas last year and often at the hands of family members. So what can we do? Joining me today is Megan Green from the DePelchin Children's Center to help us recognize the signs of child abuse and to give us resources in preventing abuse in honor of Child Abuse Awareness Month. It's Thursday, April 18th. I'm Rahil Ramzanali, and here's what Houston is talking about. Megan, welcome into CityCast Houston. How are you? Hi, thank you. I'm doing great. You know, I saw these numbers in 2023. There were over 58,000 victims of abuse and neglect in Texas. What kinds of things are children experiencing and what exactly counts as abuse and neglect? Yes. So the highest form of abuse was neglectful supervision. And this is a pretty typical trend. Um, it came in about 65% of the reports were for that. And then following that was physical abuse as the second highest. And then third was uh, sexual abuse reports. But um, yeah, so the reports of abuse, they basically come into different categories, could be neglectful supervision, physical sexual abuse, emotional abuse, abandonment, and then medical neglect and physical neglect as well. Um, and now we have also reports on sex and labor trafficking. That's a wide range, right? Like, how are these cases being discovered? How are these children, you know, getting saved? And how are we reporting on this data? Yes, yes. Well, schools tend to be the highest uh, providers who report. And then it's followed by law enforcement and medical personnel. And, you know, with schools being kind of the touch point, they're the ones that see children the majority of the day throughout the year. That's why those reports tend to come in higher from schools. What trends are we seeing in Houston specifically? Well, Harris County, um, the average of confirmed victims has been around 6,400 over the last 10 years. And sadly, in the pandemic, we saw those numbers increase. But over the last two years, they have decreased again. And I think this tells us two different things. I think it affirms what we know about perpetrators often being a family member or someone close to that child. But it also confirms that family stressors really play a large role in this. And as we all know, the pandemic was a very scary and stressful time for families. When we look at these numbers in Houston specifically or Harris County, are, are we seeing more abuse, neglect here than other major cities? Do we have those numbers? So Harris County being one of the largest counties in the state, yes, those numbers are higher. Um, however, you know, in some ways they're skewed because we are such a large county with so many people, whereas other counties around the state, people may be spread out. Uh, they might be in more rural areas where reporting and information is not as uh, well received or just well known. And so that's why those numbers tend to be higher in our county, in our city. I'm a Girl Scout dad, okay? And the reason I'm bringing this up is we have to do trainings every single year, no matter what, on ways to recognize abuse and neglect with scouts, right? Like you have to do these trainings. And I feel like I'm trained in this to understand like, okay, here are some signs. What are signs that people should look for with children that might be getting abused? Yeah, so there's no perfect answer, but we have a lot of research that shows some, you know, physical signs might be 
unexplained injuries, you know, consistent injuries. Children can definitely play and get hurt, but we're thinking of injuries that don't seem to match up with normal child play, uh, especially if they're under the clothing. Um, and we're thinking of emotional things, changes in behavior or mood, you know, uh, decline in school performance. If children become secretive or they start hiding things, that's often a, a warning sign. And then in terms of um, sexual abuse warning signs, we want to think about inappropriate sexual behaviors for that age, children who are kind of withdrawing or becoming depressed suddenly, children feeling threatened by touch would be another reason. And the reason I brought that training up and why I want to piggyback off your answer is I know people who are interacting with children are taking these trainings, right? I just feel like as a society, this is something we should be all doing and learning and understanding what to look for because you just never know, right? And there might be people who never interact with children, but most of us do. And it's such a strong tool to have to recognize what is happening that maybe we could save that one child. Yes, definitely. There's a great resource, uh, Tex, T-E-X, protects.org. They provide a lot of great information on basic warning signs and information for general public to know, and then also how to report from there as well. Now, on the other side of this is when you have all these tools, I'm very vigilant. I'm looking at like every child, like, am I, oh, do I recognize something, right? What are some common misconceptions or myths surrounding child abuse and neglect that our listeners should know about? Yeah. So I don't know that everyone fully realizes that the majority of perpetrators are parents or a close family member to that child. So sadly, where we would imagine a child would be safest in their own home tends to be where a child experiences abuse. So that's the first thing. Um, there's also a lot of myths that abuse only occurs in low socioeconomic communities. Um, and the research shows us that physical abuse and neglect may be higher in those communities. However, sexual abuse occurs across the board in all communities across society. This is a really tough one. And there are a lot of people out there that may have seen something from someone they know personally. And whether it be just not the best parenting skills, whether it be physical abuse, whatever it may be when it comes to abuse and neglect, it's so hard to confront that person, right? Because you don't want to get involved in terms of breaking up that family. That's what a lot of people think. What are some tips on dealing with this, right? Because it is a hard thing to report or confront that parent. What do you do in situations where you think you are recognizing signs of abuse or neglect? Yeah. So depending on the type of relationship you have with that parent, you know, if we're just observing some parenting skills that aren't great and we think they might be bordering abuse, talking to them in an odd judgmental, empathetic way, you know, saying something like, I, I see you're going through something, I know you're stressed. There's programs out there that could help you navigate, you know, this crazy world of parenting. Um, it's worth it. it. It could keep you from taking your stress too far and hurting your child. Can I offer you some resources for that? Or, hey, have you looked into this? However, I, I do want to say the law in Texas states that all citizens are mandated reporters, meaning that, you know, if we as citizens have a reasonable suspicion that abuse is happening, we should make the report. And um, there's some great resources out there to provide additional education on this in case you maybe suspect, but you're not sure. Um, but what we want the community to know is that you're not responsible for investigating, interrogating, or interviewing a child, and you're not required to confirm the abuse. That's not on us. It's on the professionals to handle that. That was my next point is you know, a lot of people think immediately you go talk to the child and try to learn about what's happening and you take the ropes on this, right? And that's really not the way to do it. Correct. Yeah. We want we want to be very careful how we manage a situation like this. So, you know, the law is clear that we're mandated reporters. And if we have reasonable suspicion, you know, this isn't just something we made up in our head, but we're seeing some warning signs that are really concerning, then we would want to report that and let the professionals take it from there. When we do report here in Houston for all of our listeners, do we just immediately call the police? Who, who do we call? 
It's a great question. So there's actually two different ways we can report. There's the Texas Abuse Hotline. So it's txabusehotline.org. Or there's a phone number. And that phone number is 1-800-252-4500. And when you call, um, they will ask some basic information. So something new in 2023 is that people can no longer make an anonymous report. Um, Prior to then, that was available, but they will want some basic information just in case they need more for follow-up. Gotcha. And that's not going to be used to tell the parent or child, right, that information? Correct. It is for the call line for them to have that information to get in touch with you. Families have a lot going on. Let Ollie help manage the mental load with new cognitive health supplements for everyone four and up, like delicious Lolly Focus Pops or Lolly Mellow Pops for kids. And for parents, try three new Brainy Chews to help you focus, chill out, or get energized. Find these cognitive health buddies for the whole fam at Ollie.com. That's O L L Y.com. These statements have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. This product is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. This episode is brought to you by ShipStation. If you run an e-commerce business, you know how much work it takes to produce something great while dealing with complicated shipping issues. That's why over 130,000 companies have turned to ShipStation, an innovative tool that allows you to focus less on shipping and more on building your brand. With ShipStation, you can manage orders, label printing, reporting, and customer service on one easy-to-use dashboard. You'll reduce warehouse costs with reliable enterprise solutions and save thousands on shipping costs with discounts up to 89% off. Plus, you can effortlessly import orders from everywhere you sell online. So, turn your shipping challenges into opportunities for growth. Go to ShipStation.com and use code POD to sign up for your free 60-day trial. That's ShipStation.com, code POD. Megan, our city is so incredibly diverse and with different cultures comes different styles of parenting and disciplining. So what advice do you have when it comes to helping families learn about physical forms of discipline and abuse? Yeah, so um, what's great is there's so much wonderful research out there about, you know, what really works when we think of, um, you know, things like um, hitting, you said, or or just different types of discipline that really borderline abuse. What we found is that they're really just not effective. And so if we're really trying to change a behavior and we're trying to motivate our children to do what we need them to do, there's tools out there that can do that and that have been proven and that make change happen in children. So we have programs available in our city um, where families can come and they can learn about those different tools. And a lot of the research has been done cross-culturally. So um, we can provide information on that as well. When things go unreported, what type of things does it typically result in? You know, the research shows us that once a child's victimized by abuse, it actually can create a likelihood that it can happen again to them. So we see that re-victimization happening. Victims of abuse can often become abusers themselves. And really just most often we think about children who don't receive any intervention for the abuse they've experienced. And we see depression, anxiety, school problems, and relationship problems happening. And it may not be right away, but it happens throughout the life cycle and different developmental milestones in their life. Is there anything that the city of Houston could do better to educate families or help children out in these situations? Definitely. There's a variety of things. One, you know, of course, look for organizations that offer parenting programs for families. Monetary donations are great, but even if that's not something that you can do, offer your place of business to host workshops that educate families on these topics. We're really seeking communities where information isn't as widely spread, Uh, you know, volunteering your time to mentor a child or a teen in your community. You know, you mentioned Girl Scouts. It's a great way to get involved. Children need a positive role model in their life. And, you know, just having any loving adult in their life can make a huge difference. It's such a big thing. Such a big thing. Yes. 
All right. So tell me, what is Depelchin's Children's Center doing right now for Child Abuse Prevention Month? What programs do you have going on and what exactly do you all do at the Children's Center? Yeah. So we have a very long history. We have actually been in the Houston community since 1892. Wow. And our history has been child welfare services. So foster care and adoption. Um, but in the 90s, we started recognizing that we needed to prevent children from entering the system at all. And so through that, uh, we've been able to provide parenting services for many years and that has grown. And so we serve any parent in Houston and surrounding cities. Um, I'm even more excited to share that we have programs specific for fathers because we recognize that moms and dads parent differently. And so we very much tailor it to the need of the parent and the family um, so we we work alongside the parents. We want all parents to know that parenting is hard. We can we can sit there with you in that, and we also feel that culture is very important. So we want to respect the family where they're coming from, but we want to give those tools to show them there can be a better way. There's a healthy relationship you can have with your child, and uh, we want to support parents in doing that. So all of our services are free our parenting programs and, and fatherhood as well. Um, and then we can also offer free counseling to parents and children who maybe have gone through that trauma or abuse, or just even simply experiencing that family stress and feeling like we don't know who else to turn to. Yeah, that's so important. And I've linked the website in our show notes. So for those who are listening that want some of these tips, want to check out some of these programs, I love that you have a parenting stress and self-care resource because I think we often forget about that, right? And just how hard it can be sometimes raising children. I also see that there's a handling temper tantrums, which I'm looking at that right now because, oh, you know what? It can be really (laughs) hard, Megan. It can be hard. It is very hard being a parent, for sure. Megan, thank you so much for joining us today. And thank you for putting out these incredible resources. And again, everything is linked in our show notes. We appreciate you taking some time out. Thank you so much. Glad to be here. That was Megan Green. All the resources we talked about are linked in our show notes. Before we go, I want to give a huge shout out to our listener at Rock Freddy on Instagram for listening to every single episode of CityCast Houston. That's almost 600 episodes. We appreciate the support and we hope to continue making shows you love. That will do it for today. Thank you for listening and I hope you learned something new. Megan, you ready? I'm ready. It's going to be the hardest interview of your life.